Hey, Shelly, Tony. I have no clue what this is about, but let's find out. <laughs> I'm gonna head out in the yard since you probably don't know where half this stuff is. We're gonna show you a recipe that's fairly easy for the holiday season. Okay. So I'm gonna head out and you're messing with your truck. Yep. <laughs> All right, so the first thing I'm gonna grab is some rosemary that we're growing out here. Rosemary is super easy to grow. It is a shrub, basically. So I'm gonna just cut me off probably this one right here, just the top part. So the next thing I'm gonna grab is some of our thyme. And I'm just gonna cut me a piece of this off. This stuff grows super easy too. You could probably grow this indoors if you're wanting to save a little money from going to the grocery store and getting it. Plus fresh, smells so, so good. All right, so next thing I'm gonna grab here, I'm gonna grab out of my green stock is some chilies. I'm gonna go ahead and pick these red ones. So next thing on the list, grab me one of these onions. So I did make a pit stop into the chicken coop and grab the three eggs that were out there. So got my onion, got a chili pepper, my thyme, and my rosemary. I will need one of these eggs. So one last thing I had to pick up, parsley, yeah, parsley out here. This is super easy to grow too. Okay, so now that I figured out what she's trying to do, <laughs> I'm gonna let her keep on talking and I'm gonna start prepping. Okay, so besides the rosemary, the uh, thyme, and the parsley that I grabbed outside along with the onion and the chili, we need garlic, butter, one egg, some mushrooms, about a cup of mushrooms, finely chopped, a steak, we've got, what is this, just a steak steak that we... It's a ribeye steak. A ribeye steak that we cut in half. You're gonna need some of these puff pastry sheets, thawed out, just one of them for this, for what we're doing. Some red cooking wine, some balsamic vinegar, and some milk. Pepper. And some pepper and salt. And what you're gonna do is tenderize this, and I'm gonna turn on our um, cast iron skillet. Get it nice and hot. A little salt and pepper on both sides. I always add it as much as you like on it. You know, some people like more salt, some people don't like salt, so feel free to go whichever way you want with it. All right, what are you doing, hon? I'm taking the, what is this, rosemary? That's rosemary, yes. I'm taking the, I call them leaves off the stem, and I'm gonna chop them up real fine. I'm okay, gonna do the same thing to the thyme. Just take all the little leaves off of it. And into there, you're putting about what, two tablespoons of butter? Something like that. I'm just gonna let that melt down. Then you're gonna put some, a little bit of olive oil in there. Be good. And then your herbs. And you're just gonna stir that around. This is what you're going to char your meat in. And you're just going to set it aside. You just want to brown the outside of the meat. You don't want to overcook it. Just enough to brown the outside. Alright, so let's make sure both sides are brown. What we mean by brown, you see the starch side 
That's pretty much what you want on both sides of the steak. Yeah, because you don't want to overcook it because we're going to stick it in the oven. So now he's just going to pull them out and set them aside. And all I'm doing is taking the extra oil off of it so it's not on your encasing. He's just going to chop it up into small little bits. You can use regular onion, red onion, just whatever you have. And no, it does, you don't have to have your own garden for it. You no. can, all this stuff you can buy in the store. We just happen to have it here. Next up, garlic. This is fresh garlic that we grew. Garlic's ourselves. super easy to grow in it, hun. Oh, yeah. All these things that we're showing you that we got out of our garden, really fairly easy to grow. I want to chop it down real small too because garlic packs a punch and I'm pretty sure you don't want to chew down on a piece of garlic. We're going to add a little bit of pepper just because, you know, I, I got to have some spice in my food. All you want to do, you want to take all the veins out and all the seeds out. That's where the heat cut. Pretty much every pepper that's where the main heat is stored. So you want to make sure you get all the seeds out of it. And this is what I call the vein. So you just want to make sure you get that. It doesn't have to be a perfect cut. As long as you get the majority of it out. Alright, so he's just chopping that up really fine. When we go to cook, it's just basically whatever we have. Yeah. And you don't have to use hot peppers at all. You can use a mild pepper. It just gives it that nice, sweet heat that we all like. All right, so now we got the onions, the garlic, the chili, all in here. Now we're gonna dump in the mushrooms in a second because we want to kind of caramelize this. All right, you see how this is, onions and stuff are turning a little bit translucent. Now is when we're going to add probably about a quarter cup of red cooking wine. I never really measure anything for this kind of stuff. A bit more. All right, and then we're going to add a splash of balsamic vinegar. Now, tablespoon. Just enough to give that acidy taste, acidic taste. Now he's going to add the, the mushrooms, the ones that are all chopped up. And to this we're going to add about maybe a quarter cup of milk. We're just using light fat-free milk. Two percent. Two percent. You can use heavy cream, it's going to thicken up quicker, but this is all basically going to, you're just going to simmer it until it gets thick, like a paste. Alright, so this is starting to turn into a paste, the liquid is basically just cooking off. And what are you doing, hon? I am fixing up the sheet, getting it ready for this. The stuff? The stuff. Okay, so just roll it out a little bit. You don't want it too thin. Yeah. You just put some flour down because it'll stick to the surface if you don't. So what are you doing? Cutting it in half. And you're going to have to stretch it out to make two equal pieces so that your steak can get wrapped in it. All right, what are you doing, hon? So I'm going to take this stuff and just bury it all over it. You pretty want, even coat yeah just leave the ends kind of open up so you can fold them on themselves and that way you can pinch it all shut you put it into your bread and you just roll it over pinch 
the side shut. He flipped it over so the back side is now the top and he's just going to use the egg that we had and I'm just, just going to give it a little quick brush with it. I'll give it that brown, nice little brown color. Yeah. So to the top he's just, just going to score a couple little marks. Kind of like on your pies, so that it lets the steam out. Steam out. Mm -hmm. Going into your preheated oven. At how much? 350 degrees. 350 degrees. For 20 minutes. Check. Start checking it at 15. All right. One last tip: If you're using cast iron, when you clean it, when you're done. You want to make sure you get it dry, get some coconut oil, just regular coconut oil. I'm just gonna put it on a towel while it's hot and this keeps it seasoned so things don't stick. Just don't put an overabundance on it because you don't want it dripping off. And like I said, I've got it on, the burner on, so it warms up the cast iron so the pores will take the oil and then sit it aside. All right. Nice golden brown. And we're gonna let it sit for about 10 minutes. So after you let it sit 10 minutes, go ahead and plate it on up. Should be just a little bit pink in the middle, but completely done. And the parsley, that's just for decoration.